Uh, welcome to another episode of Affiliate Trading Podcast, everyone. My name is William and our speaker today is Trent, which is our Senior Marketing and Dealing Executive of Affiliate Capital. Okay, so KLCI had have, have recently rebound from its yearly low of 1,373 points to regain the 1,400 level, despite the announcement of the general election day on 19th of November by the election commission. Okay, so uh, today we are going to discuss what are the potential investing and trading strategies in the Malaysia stock market ahead of the election. Okay, so Trent, how have you been? Yeah, I'm feeling good today. Good, good. Okay, good, good. So let us move into the podcast now. So first question for you, Trent. With election happening in two weeks' time, should investors stay in or stay out of the market before the election happens? Okay, so uh, the local stock market will most likely to rally uh, on the emergence of a majority government. But if the scenario fa fails to play out, then the uh, market sentiment could be significantly dampened. So uh, if you look back at the past uh, nine general election in Malaysia, the FBM, uh, the KLCI index, uh, tended to do better on average post-election. So the average return is around 1% to 2% at, uh, within one month to three months after election result is out. However, uh, ever since the later generation on, in 2018, Busan Malaysia performance prior to an election had been mixed. So with price movements seem to come in after the election, the uh, KSI index had actually fallen 23% since the last election, mainly due to uh, political instability leading to foreign selling. So my advice to our audience is to employ a more conservative strategy in the market, such as uh, dividend stocks and the defensive sector with stable cash flow and solid earnings. Okay, okay. So, so in short, is to be conservative and only invest in stocks that you think won't affect by the election. Okay, the defensive, the so-called defensive. Okay, so next question here. What do you think of the outcome of the election? Okay, how, how will it turn out and how will it affect the equities market after the election? Okay, uh, it's actually quite hard to forecast the outcome of this election uh, as the uh, political scene currently is quite fragmented with uh, three major coalition. First one, Barisan National, Rekanda National and Pakatan Harapan. So there is high chances that the winning government will not be able to secure a majority parliament and also may need to resort to partnership with one of the other two coalition to form the government. So the key risk for the market will be if no coalition or party has the, has the majority after G15 resulting in hung parliament and the inability to pass the uh, 2023 budget. So this could lead to a sell down in FBF KLCI. Okay, okay. So, so that really depends. It's hard to predict. Okay, so third question here. So Malaysia Benchmark Index KLCI has dropped 50 points after the Ben Navarra actually announced a 0.25% rise in OPR last Thursday. Do you think the index is able to hold above 1,004 until the end of 2022? Uh, it's hard also it's also hard to predict the KSI year end closing index uh, given the current political instability and also the high car, uh, high inflation environment however based on other research houses year end target which uh, range between 1500 and 1600 uh, there's high chances that the index may hold above 1400 at the end of 2022. But nonetheless, those uh, forecasts does not include the outcome of the election. So the major key risk is still the near-term uh, outcome of the general election and also whether the winning coalition is able to uh, secure a majority in parliament. Okay, so hopefully we can see a window dressing after the election to bring the index up to that 1005, 1006 level that most of the research house mentioned. Okay, I think it's good for everyone. Okay, last question here. So before we end the session, can you share some of the potential stocks for our audience to put into their watch list? Okay, uh, investor can actually look for banking stocks such as Maybank, Public Bank, and CMB. So recently, the Bank Negara uh, just hiked OPR rate by 25 basis point to 2.75%. 
Uh, and this allowed the banks to gain from a rising interest rate environment as uh, they are able to have higher net interest margin, uh, which is about expansion of about 5.6, 5 to 6 basis point. And also their expected earning forecasts will up by 4 to 5%. Okay. And another sector that worth watching is their transportation and logistics sector. So with crude oil prices falling from their highs, and also the current freight rate, sorry, the current high freight rate. So many shipping charter companies such as MISC, Xinyang, and Tasco are actually in the limelight of the investors. Spot charter rate have surged more than 200% in some regions, and the average one-year and three-year charters have also increased by 30% and 12% month-on-month to uh, US dollar 175,000 per day and US dollar 125,000 per day in September. So investors actually can look out for stocks in these two sectors to add to their watch list. Okay, okay. So in short, uh, I think trend reckon that the, the sectors that might be in focus next will be the, the transportation and logistics. So investors may pay a good close attention to it. Okay, thank you for your sharing today, trend. So for all of our audience information, you can now trade Busa stocks, Singapore stocks, US and Hong Kong stocks with Philip Capital. Okay, so we now allow, allow a lot of clients to trade all these uh, different countries, foreign stocks online at a very, very good brokerage. Okay, so if you want to know more about trading stocks with us, our brokerage, our services, drop us a message via Facebook and one of our representatives will contact you as soon as possible. Okay, so thank you again, Trent, and I guess I will see you next time. Yeah, thank you. See you again. Bye. Bye.